Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and in this video I have the pleasure to present you more freaks. And again, in this video I'd like to use the word freak um, in a positive way, in a rather positive way. So those are watches you cannot buy or you will not buy like that. Those are watches for people who consider themselves a little bit freaky. But I think we all can learn a lot from those watches about design, about watchmaking, about our own taste. But at the end it's just so much fun to look at those watches. And so I present you in this video four more freaks and one little extra, one little extra. In the last freak video I asked you or I showed you the, the Alexander Shorokov Fedor Dostoevsky watch. And I asked you if you want to see that watch here in real life in the studio. And it's here, it's here. Julian Kampmann at Polio24. Dot de made this possible. So Julian, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm really looking forward to examine this outstanding and fascinating timepieces in the light box in this video. So this is the program for this video. Four more freaks and then light box examination of a famous Russian novelist. <laughs> Stefan Kittelast is an independent watchmaker from the Netherlands and I presented one of his watches here on the channel years ago, at least I have this feeling, years ago. And Stefan is kind of obsessed with stars, which makes perfect sense because imagine if um, one day all the timekeeping devices on planet Earth are lost, we would be able to reconstruct our system to display time by observing the stars. Because the constellation of stars, if you measure this precisely, you can tell the time by them. I mean, think about the Omega constellation. There you have this observatory tower on the case back and there's the clear connection stars and time. But Stefan goes a step further. He really puts stars and moons and planets on his watches. Hand crafted little rotating things. They rotate together with the movement and then you have your Terra Luna with the moon or here you have the 3D Terra in motion, the globe, the earth in motion, in rotation. And the base of his watches are steel cases, relatively big, 42 millimeters and he uses an ETA 6497. This is an old pocket watch movement invented in the 50s by Unitas. Relatively simple movement, operates at 18,000 beats, so relatively slow and it has 17 jewels, so completely basic power reserve 46 hours but it's easy to handle it's reliable it's robust it's a quality movement really and you have plenty of room for decorations and this of course then is the, the beauty you can turn the watch over and then you really see something and the prices for Stefan's watches are between 3,000 up to over 8,000 euros depending on the model and the features and is this justified I think so because there's so much work in it there's so much work and you have really a unique timepiece because Catalas is not, not a big manufacturer. He really makes every watch with his own hands and so I think the price there is justified. And even if you don't want to buy one, I think it's really, really nice to see it, to see that this deep connection between time and stars. <laughs> Josef Palweber, this was an engineer, this was an engineer in Austria at the early days in watchmaking. And so um, to call this watch a freak is a little bit impudent because it is, yeah, it's a very important step in watchmaking in the methods to display time. Because Palweber invented the digital watch. And he created this digital watch by using the idea of a jumping hours. So here you have the hours on top, the minutes in the center, the seconds below. There are no discs behind the windows. If you think about the grand date, the grand date, the big date, there are always discs. But no, here you find actually jumping plates which display those hours and minutes. And the first company which bought the, the, the license from Palvia was Cortebea. Now long gone, uh, sometimes you find vintage watches with a, with a logo Cortebea. And the next company was IWC. And in 2018, IWC presented this tribute to Palweber edition 150 years. And this is really an impressive timepiece. There are some variations. I've picked here the, the golden one. So you have 18 karat rose gold. The case diameter is 45 millimeters, so very big watch. Height is 12 millimeters. You have the sapphire see-through case. It's waterproof up to 30 meters. And inside is a very advanced IWC in-house caliber, hand winding, 60 hours power reserve, operates at a frequency of 28,800 beats. And you have here 54 stones and the movement is decorated, Geneve stripes, perlage, front sapphire and limited to 250 pieces. 
and the and the price for the gold version is around 36,000 US dollars. Yeah, and, and same price, but I think it's an extremely special watch. And again, those are watches you don't purchase like that. It's an extraordinary timepiece which really shows something, which really shows a step in watchmaking. <music> On their website I found a beautiful quote. Central to the creative process at MBNF we believe that a creative adult is a child who survived, recognizing the universal imagination of children because they are formatted into their rational, reasonable adult lives. That powerful imagination is the creative spark which continues to trigger our emotionally charged machines today machines. They call their watches machines with a reason. I've picked machine number nine. Inspired by the dynamic profiles of automotive and aviation mid-century design. Um, yes, we can agree to that if you compare this thing with movies and, and other yeah, yeah, the witnesses of this design in that era then you really see it. Wow, what a watch, what a watch. And without words to describe that watch. So let's stick to the facts here. If you see the case, this is the mixture of titanium, rose gold and rhodium and the dimensions are as followed. 57 is the length, the width is 47 and the height 23 millimeters. So by no means comfortable, so by no means handy and easy to wear. It's a spectacular monstrosity on your wrist and I think it's supposed to be exactly that. And it's water resistant up to 30 meters, assembled in three segments with patented three-dimensional gasket. And the engine, so the movement here is manual winding in-house movement with two fully independent balance wheels with planetary differential. And again a relatively slow movement but with 301 components, 52 joules, 45 hours power reserve and it shows the hours and minutes on the vertical dial display here. And the glass is sapphire, sapphire crystal treated with anti-reflective coating. And the price for one of these watches is 200,000 US dollars. I, I know it's, it's completely insane again, but I think only by looking at this watch we're winning here something. <laughs> Welcome to the world of comic heroes. 1946 Dick Tracy made his first appearance in comic books and 72 years later two brothers from Connecticut United States Nick and Charlie Mattis launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise money to produce the Dick Tracy watch. The watch in the comic books is basically a mobile phone. A first mobile phone Dick Tracy could, yeah, could talk to his colleagues, to his supervisors and to other people with his, with his watch. And those brothers here they wanted to bring this fictional watch to life via Kickstarter. Oh no, it's what Indiegogo I think. So they raised money for it and what you see here is the prototype. And the main feature here is the Bluetooth module, microphone, speakers, that, so that you can connect that watch to a mobile phone and then you can use your mobile form, uh, phone through this watch. So completely redundant but I think pure fun to look at. And this watch actually is a, is a, is a quartz piece with a Miota movement, steel case, sapphire crystal and the width is 26 millimeters, the length 48, thickness 11 and the radio mesh here is brass serious brass. And they wanted to produce a limited edition, each watch $250, so really reasonable and really affordable. But unfortunately the last, the last update I've seen on the internet is from 2018. So I have to uh, suppose that they, yeah, they didn't execute this, this project, which is quite a shame because there's always this sublime feeling when somebody puts something beautiful from fiction and puts it in or pulls it into reality. This is really then the triumph over reason. And so if you have news about the Dick Tracy watch then please let us know in the comments. Okay those were my four freaks and now let's go in the light box and check out the Alexander Shorokov Fedor Dostoevsky. Okay here we are with Fedor Dostoevsky made by Alexander Shorokov which I've called a Russian brand but in fact founded by a Russian but it's located in Germany. And you see here something very, very special. I mean, Russian design um, has many sides between, let's say, 16th science fiction and the, the grandeza of the Romanovs, the, let's say the Belle Epoque in Russia. And this clearly is inspired by 19th century design, 19th century beauty, named after the famous novelist 
Fyodor Dostoevsky, he wrote novels like The Idiot, for example, which we have all read in, in the original language, of course. And he was a gambler. He lost fortunes um, yeah, with the roulette game. And this is what you see here, a dial inspired by the roulette table. And so what we see here is a strange mixture of tradition and a game, and a game of luck. And the case is a square. Every side measures 43 millimeters, 43 millimeters, so massive case. The height is 12 millimeters, relatively slender, as you can see, 12 millimeters. The luck width is hard to tell because you can see here are, yeah, this is very unusual, very old fashioned. But the strap here is 28, 28 millimeter strap is here attached. The case is entirely steel. High polished, except the sides here, they are brushed, as you can see, nice contrast. And overall it follows, of course, the layout of a pocket watch, the layout of a square pocket watch, which is really something you don't see very often. And now let's discuss the dial a bit. As mentioned, it follows the, yeah, the inspiration of a roulette game table. The outer numerals are the hours, obviously, inspired by Art Nouveau. Then you see the colors black and red, and you see here the inner, those inner numerals, there you can see a 24 hour scale. And near the center, you see some strange numbers, 63, 25, 26, 33, what's this? And I think those are the last numbers of the roulette table, the highest numbers of the roulette table. Then you see here the seconds, very small, and there you find the, the logo, but what's most appealing here, this is the Gyoshe effect you see on this dial. And this is executed spectacular, spectacular. I don't know if the camera can, can catch this, but it looks so exciting from, from, from in a close view. So exciting and deep and rich and perfectly, perfectly executed. On 12, you see the little A from Alexander Shorokov from the brand. By the way, excuse my fingers, I work with ink and so it's, it's a mess. But yeah, I've washed them, of course, before touching this watch. And there you find the date on the unusual position 10. And I know people will comment this in yeah different ways, let's put it that way. For me, I'm very tolerant with dates. I like them in unusual positions like the 6 or 4 or here the 10. I really like that. I really like that. And what caught my attention here first was the overall um, impact of the design, the colors, together with this, with this cheerful layout, all those cheerful numerals and all those textures and forms. And I mean, look at the hands, those syringe hands here in black and red. And this was a good choice. I mean, imagine a watch that big with um, yeah, massive hands, but here you can see through those hands, you can they, they are well integrated in, in this design, which is big, but at the same time somewhat light. And so yeah, I really, really, really like that look here. Really like that look. And of course, the next feature is here the crown, position 12. There you have it, follows the layout of a pocket watch. And, and this together with this strange luck here. Um, it's so unusual and so exciting to look at and it's so um, it looks so well made It might sound crazy, but in my eyes this it looks like it should look like this is The, the, the most normal way a watch can look like because it's all so well integrated Okay, but now let's open here the clasp. You see an alligator strap. This is real alligator and there are uh, there's the seal protected species so everything okay everything legit with that strap you have extremely problems by the way if you buy a watch with a real alligator and you have to ship it over borders they might confiscate everything okay and here you see the case back see through case back and there you see the movement this is a polyot movement 3105 hand winding and you see it's a rather big movement offers a power reserve of 42 hours and you can see here through a sapphire crystal, by the way, this is sapphire as well on the other side. And look at that. Surrounded by the numbers of the roulette wheel. And there you have it. There you have a hand engraved movement. And I mean, this is quite a look. This is quite a look. 
And to do this, they buy those polyot movements. They have to disassemble everything, to change everything, to engrave everything, to assemble it again. And then you have this amazing, amazing look here. And so overall, really stands out. Really stands out, but not in a, in a, in a crazy way. I mean, the, the size is super crazy. The size is super crazy and the impact is crazy. But the overall ingredients together form in my eyes an ensemble which is very organic, very organic watch. And I just love it, I must say, I just love that look. Okay, but now let's operate it. There's the crown, we have to wind the crown now. How can you do this with this form? Well, it's relatively easy, that's the reason why you can bend this. You have to bend it that way, like that, and then you can just wind it. See that? Relatively easy, relatively comfortable. Now it's running. It's running as you can see there the, are uh, the seconds. And to set the time now you need position one. It's very handy, there is only one position. And now you the same thing and now you can set the, the time like this. And to set the date, this is very easy. A good reliable quick set if you ask me. Date is changing, now you go back, you go back and now again and there's this changing again. This is a very nice quick set because it's robust, nothing can go wrong. And this is how you operate that watch. Now it's running and now is the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen, let's put it on the wrist. To make a nice comparison, I put my Dubian Schaldenbrand on the wrist. This is a sterling silver watch, square case, follows the design of the Belle Epoque as well as you can see. Very close, stylistically, but I mean other size, other size. So let's change here. The Dubie has a case diameter of 34. 34 millimeter wears big. All those square cases wear big. You have to <laughs> keep this in mind. And there you see the difference. There you see the difference. But now let's put it on the wrist. Ah, ah, this is so good, this. <laughs> this feels great. There's no law that we have to be normal all the time, ladies and gentlemen. There's no law for it. We can go crazy like we want. And imagine Case Back Tim with this watch, a nice suit in a casino or in a rather dodgy <laughs> environment. And this is just perfect. This is just perfect. I really love it. I really love it. But imagine now that watch in a normal size. This would be stunning. This would be stunning. Imagine this watch a smidgen bigger than the Doobie, the Doobie and Child Run. Let's say 35 millimeters, a 35 millimeter square, then this would absolutely worth a purchase. Retail price, by the way, for this watch is 4,390 euros. Those are easy over 4,600 US dollars. And now the question, is it worth it? Uh, hard, to, hard to tell, to be frank. Hard to tell. I mean, the design is relatively unique. You have a hand engraved movement and the overall quality feels amazing, I must say. Feels amazing, especially, or looks amazing, especially the, the effect on the dial, this Giorgio effect. Looks absolutely stunning, absolutely amazing. And so, um, if this watch was a bit smaller, then I would be in trouble. Then I would be in deep trouble. Look at this ensemble. Imagine this watch with that design. I mean, this is a lovely watch. Absolutely lovely. I, I love it to death. But imagine this as an addition to that. Wow, this would be really cool. Really cool package. Um, mentioning the package, the watch came in a box. Looks like that. And this is, yeah, solid wood solid wooden box. If you like me, then I can open it, but this is not so special. It's like a well-made luxury watch box, as you can see. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that watch now will go back to Julian Kampmann. I'd love to wear it a few days, but I think this would be too risky. It's so expensive and yeah, changing the strap is close to impossible. And so yeah, this has to go back like that. Okay, welcome back and Julian Kampan, thank you again for this great opportunity. And my question to you now, dear viewer, is if you want to see part three of this little series, Freak Watches, 
Um, I hope so, because it's so much fun to do the research and organize all the images and read articles about those great timepieces. So if you want to see part three, then let me know in the comments, please. And if you like those videos, please then consider subscribing. It's a big help for me. And if you want to see more images I find interesting and beautiful, then please join me on Instagram. It's kspec underscore Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.